Hey, what up? It's your boy Aki checking in here with another video. It is currently 1 a.m. Um, as I'm recording this. Um, so what I want to talk to you guys about today is a little bit of what's going on in my business as well as um, just being able to be a problem solver in real estate and why that's beneficial to you and it'll help you more money as well as just continue to build yourself up, create momentum and uh yeah, all that nice stuff. So this week has actually been my busiest week ever. Um, when I say that, I literally got four properties. Uh, currently, they're under contract, um, and two of them I wrapped up, up under contract. And so right now, I'm working with four deals that I'm looking at, you know, doing some dispo work and getting those things, you know, wholesale, you know, uh, making the profit, flipping them and uh, doing that whole deal. So that's what's going on with that. But tonight I actually had an appointment with um, one of the smaller deals out of the four that is one that could have went either way. And with this lead in particular, I actually had been on an appointment um, several other times where I left the appointment without the contract. And I made it a point today that I was actually you know, not going to waste my time with this uh, whole deal at all anymore until we actually got something done and you know they were actually serious this time so a little bit about what happened today was um i went out to the appointment and the first thing i noticed is you know the husband and the uh, wife are on two different pages one thing that you really want to be paying attention to when you're going out on these appointments is a body language are the people that are interested in selling in this case the husband and wife are they on the same page is their body language the same you know, are they in synchronicity? Um, things like that. And the reason why I say that is because I saw that he was just down. He was out of it. And I kind of cracked the joke a little bit um, in terms of just letting him know how busy I was. And I kind of and I called uh, uh, called, you know, called, you know, a situation that I was referring to that happened to me earlier today. Um, I called a person an old fart and the wife was kind of giggling a little bit, you know, kind of made me chuckle a little bit. On appointments, I like to say things that are going to make me laugh. I try to be very, you know, um, just casual about the way I do business because that's just, to me, if it's not fun, then why do it? So kind of just, you know, made a little joke. It's kind of how I am. And he was just, you know, out of it. Even if you make a joke like that and it's not funny, you know, usually just being cordial, people will give you a little giggle. That's besides the fact. This guy was just kind of had his head down the whole time until I actually got him to open up about what was really going on behind the scenes. And so I got there tonight at around uh, 830, didn't leave the appointment until around 1030, two whole hours I was there where, uh, you know, and that's not really typical for me, especially when it's a, a situation where the things are motivated. It turns out that... Uh, I had been on the appointment before where he told me that, you know, he wanted to, uh, uh, he was iffy about the house and, you know, he wanted to fix it up and he wanted to do this and do that. And his mom was going to buy it. Who's actually, you know, uh, older, has great credit, but, you know, doesn't have the, um, the ability to get enough, uh, on a loan to fix up the property. And mind you, this is a lower uh, class property. It's probably fixed up. The ARV is probably around 30, 40,000. Um, but uh, yeah, so wife knows nothing. I mean, sorry, mother knows nothing about fixing up properties, you know, putting in, investing in the right things to make the property, you know, get a, a full market value. And he's saying that he wants to do the same thing as well. For the past five years, his property has been vacant. You know, um, he, he got it from his father. His father's still alive, but just wants him to keep it uh, essentially in the family and just do things like that. So his wife um, and him had discussed, you know, years prior. This is, you know, their time where they actually are in a position to do what they always wanted to do, which was move to Florida, which is move to Florida. Uh, and, you know, they've already made, taken all the precautions, all the steps. And of course, you know, what do you know? This is the last thing that they have to do, which is sell the house to get the funds to, you know, not only do their first month's worth of rent, their deposit, but um, just get things up and running in their new home in Florida. Um, beautiful, beautiful place, by the way. And so 
what I had to do was I had to diffuse a situation where he's worried about, you know, what his family thinks. And at the end of the day, his wife is, uh, you know, explaining to me that, uh, you know, usually whenever it comes to decisions like this, that he cannot make them, he doesn't make them for weeks at a time. And so we've been going back and forth about a month now, and we finally get to the day. And I'm like, hey, man, I'm not leaving here without, I'm not saying hey, man, but in my head, I'm like, you know, I'm not leaving here without a contract. These guys are going to Florida. It would have been a disservice to them because I wasn't able to close them. And so what happened was, I uh, allowed them, I gave them a little bit of breathing room and, you know, she asked me, could they talk about it for a little bit? And so I went to the car, you know, um, talked with some people um, about the situation that was going on. Um, and so they said they all, all they needed was five minutes. I gave them as long as they needed. I waited um, for them to actually, you know, look at me and say, hey, you know, come on back in. I was in my car just, you know, talking uh, with somebody and, you know, that never happened. What happened was I heard a big boom, a big slam, and I uh, heard a yelling and things like that. And I walked back over there. And so I figured out what they're yelling about is the wife had uh, never shown him the places that they were going to see, uh, that they were going to be living at, or, you know, the options that they had in Florida. He never saw that um, whole situation. So basically he's walking in blind just by full faith that she choose something that he may like. Um, not only that, but, um, he didn't know that she was talking to me for me to come over back for me to come today. Now I probably met up with these guys two or three times, um, on other appointments where they said they were ready to sell the house, but you know, it didn't happen. And so, um, we get there today and, you know, all this happens, you know, I'm trying to defuse a situation where after she goes ahead and, uh, you know, goes in the house and um, things like that, I'm talking with him, you know, letting him know like, hey, you know, you're a man, you know, you got to stand up, you know, you got to be a decision maker and things like that. And if um, I had to let him know that, uh, you know, if, if your family doesn't respect you for this situation, you know, you got to ask them at the same time. You know, where were they um, five years, you know, when they could have been helping you fix up this property? Now it's coming time for you to leave um, and build your life for yourself and, you know, your kids, their future and things like that. And they just, uh, you know, it's kind of just messing up your situation. How convenient this time. And so we go from there and um, I just let him know that, you know, he's capable of making the decision and basically give him an easy out. So. Uh, hopefully this contract sticks, but I gave him an out to whereas, you know, if he wants to get out of this contract, um, today's Thursday currently, if he wants to get out of the contract by Monday, um, that he's allowed to do so and that we won't even um, charge him in terms of um, just, you know, just backing out of a deal that, you know, no harm, no foul. You always want to give somebody that out, make them feel comfortable as possible, because at the end of the day, we only want to work with motivated sellers, right? So... That is basically what I've been dealing with. Um, that's kind of cool to me just because a lot of people would have been frustrated, just left that situation. But that's why you, 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 you are like a realtor wouldn't be able to handle that situation. Not to, No disrespect to realtors at all, but I know typically they're not dealing with distress situations. Every single deal that I de have dealt with thus far has been distressed to some point, you know, people, landlords are older or, you know, um, someone's passed away and then you have to make sure that the, you know, the kids of uh, the inherited property are all on the same page, things like that are huge, huge deals when it comes to this business. And you got to be a problem solver because if you're not a problem solver, then you can get eight alive. And I feel like I'm really, 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 really catching momentum the way I want to. Um, and just a lot of things have been coming in all at once. And um, I know I've been saying I'm getting a lot of things, um, you know, a lot of things done. And uh, this month has been a month where I actually haven't closed any deals, but where I've just been, you know, um, doing a little bit less prospecting and more so uh, just farming the ones I already have and curating them. Like for this one, for instance, we talked uh, initially the first point of contact was early May, maybe mid-May. I got to check to be sure. Um, but right now it's almost July. So that's how things work out. And you're going to meet with people multiple times. I, what I don't recommend though is 
leaving an appointment without a contract because that in and of itself is just a waste of marketing dollars. And it's really, I'm newer in this business, you know, I've only been doing this a year. So yeah, so that's what I'm, one thing I really got to work on myself is whenever I go out on these appointments and um, sooner or later, I feel like I'm going to hire a dispo. I'm not going to be paying somebody to go out on an appointment and then them come back to me or come back to the business without the signed contract. That's a no bueno. So yeah, man, be a problem solver. Um, hope you are doing well. If you got any questions, please be sure to hit me up in the comment box below. I've also been helping out a ton of people. I've probably been talked to this week. I've talked to, I believe, seven or eight people that have had problems in terms of, you know, investing, whether it be flips or, you know, just starting out with wholesaling and things like that. And one thing I really stress to you guys is that if you need any help, reach out. Don't be that guy that's too proud because, you know, uh, time passes you by and, um, you know, this business isn't, uh, it's not hard necessarily. It's simple, but uh, got a, has a lot of moving parts. And I feel like personally, there's only so much knowledge that you need because after you get the whole concept of it, it's really just getting your feet um, wet in the water, get get your feet on the ground, start moving and take it step by step. Because um, some people you see quick success where they're saying, you know, I got a, my first deal in a week and things like that. Most likely, it's not going to be you. Statistically, it's not going to be you. It takes a little bit of time to get traction. That wasn't me. It takes a little bit of time to get traction, and then you're going to hit that critical mass, you know, maybe six months, nine months, a year down the line where everything comes in at once, like it's kind of happening for me right now, which is pretty dope, and it all could end tomorrow, but I'm going to take the momentum, you know, where it's at right now. Um, keep moving forward. As you see right here, man, I got the damn... Uh, Got the vision board behind me, got my goals every day. I'm repeating my goals, you know, looking at what I got to do to make that happen before the end of the year. And um, I'm really, really, really focused. Um, so, yeah, man, I, if I can be of any service to you, hit me up in the comment box below. Um, as well as I have a text, a number where you can text me in the comment box below. A lot of people have been hitting me up via there. Um, I'm here to serve and to help. So... My goal is by the end of the year, I can help 10 people get their first deal because at the same time, some people are saying they want to help, you know, 100 people, things like that. I'm still new to the business. I'm still getting getting these deals done and now here getting in. So um, probably sooner or later, I'm going to be, uh, you know, uh, creating some kind of barrier to entry. But for right now, you know, while you know, the subscribers are low, while I'm still new in the business, while I'm still learning and. I want to create personal relationships with people that are, you know, connected with my content and are really just, uh, you know, trying to build themselves up right now. Because, you know, that means if you're ever watching this video right now, me and you are on a journey together. So that means you need to uh, go ahead and hit me up in the comment box below um, and let me know where you're at in your business. Um, like the video, subscribe if you haven't already. And I will talk to you in the next video. It's getting laid out here. Um, Peace.